Hello everybody, this is Dr. Jennifer Taylor, and today's video is about block design in Qualtrics. So I'm going to start by sharing my screen. Let's see. And I have a survey ready, and this is just a survey about Blackboard satisfaction. So I ask questions like, how long have you used Blackboard? Um, when was the last time you used it? On average, how many times a week do you log in? How would you feel if you could no longer use it? The obstacles, um, the changes that you would make. Um, asking if they attend our university, which I'm at Texas A&M University Corpus Christi. Uh, are they in graduate or undergrad students? So these are the demographics. So. With the questions, I want to make sure that they all are forced to make sure that I get the answers that I'm asking for. So I'm going to force that one. You get little stars when you force it. Um, I want to make sure they answer that one. I want to make sure they answer that one. Make sure they answer that one to make sure they answer that one. All right, so they're all forced right now. Now, the problem is when we do a preview, and let's go, we're gonna click this button right here to preview. One of the things you're gonna notice is that all the questions are on one page. And this becomes a problem for respondents for one big reason. One, we're used to having everything on one page. So having to scroll down is not something that respondents will do. And so what ends up happening is that they will stop taking your survey because they think it's over um, when in fact there's more questions. So we get around that by creating what's called blocks and adding page breaks. So there's two things we can add blocks or page breaks. So I'm gonna show you how to add a block. Now you want to add blocks when you have the different information that you're collecting. So for example, in this survey that I have, I want another block for demographics. So I'm simply gonna take this question, pull it down there, it's gonna to move to that block. I want this question, which is a demographic question. And I can change this block name to demographics. And I do believe we have two more questions of this one. All right, and so we just have those three questions that are demographics. So this block is demographic. So I have like-minded. Now let's see what it looks like now after we did that. So we're gonna click the preview button. All right, we still have a lot on one page. I forced everything, I wanna show you the second page. Um, let's see, I gotta click on everything. And see, we still have this. So this is better on the second page, but it's still a bit too much. Um, my general rule of thumb is one to two. <coughs> Oh, see, I have it validated. One, nine, seven, five. All right. So, so what I want to do here is I just want to have one to two questions. I usually just do one because it makes it easier on the respondent. I'm just going to add page breaks on this block because this is all a block of all about Blackboard. And then I'm going to go into this demographics block and I'm just going to add a page break, page break. So the block, adding a block will create a page break. So there's a break between these two questions. You do not have to add a page break there. So adding a block creates a break. However, if it's within a block, you need to add a page break. So let's see what it looks like now. All right, so we have one question. 
one question. All right, let's 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 see what it looks like in, on a cell phone. So this is what it would look like on a cell phone. Oh, I'm gonna answer the question. Yeah. So you could see what it looks like on the cell phone, kind of get an idea if if it's gonna work. All right, so you kind of just play around with it, make sure it works. But that is essentially, oh wait, one more thing I wanna show you about block design. Okay, blocks. You have block behavior. There are some theoretical reasons why you might wanna do question randomization. And what this is gonna do is you can either do no randomization, randomize the order of the questions, or present only some of the questions. So I have three questions. I might only want two of them presented. Um, and then there's this advanced randomization. So say I wanted to do that, only two of the total questions would show. Say I did randomize the order of all questions and everybody who saw this, the questions would be asked different in a different order. So these three questions, the order would be changed. Um, and so there's different reasons why you would do this, um, typically driven by some sort of theory or advanced knowledge. Uh, I'm not going to go over the advanced randomization because that's a little beyond us since we're just doing an introductory introduction. Uh, loops and merges. This is another thing that's advanced, but you can you you can do a lot of crazy stuff with these surveys. And loops and merges are, are one of the more advanced things. Um, yeah, that's it for blocks. I guess the last thing with blocks is the little three dots and you can add the block below, move the block, copy the block, lock the block so you can't add or delete anything. Delete the block, collapse the questions, preview it, view the block in a survey flow, which the survey flow is gonna tell you you have two blocks um, and you can do, uh, you can do skip logic with it, oops. And uh, and so you can you can add your skip logic that way. So again, going back to the three dots, um, you can copy the block to the library if you think you're going to use these questions in another survey. And then you can also copy them uh, the questions, the block, or the questions. So if you think you're going to use all the questions in that block, you can simply copy the entire block. You think you're going to use the questions one by one, maybe you'll use some, maybe you'll use others, then you can copy the questions to the library. So that is officially it for understanding um, the block design tutorial. I hope this has been helpful. All right, I'll talk to you later.